Hello everyone, this video is about this circa 1969 hideous looking alarm clock radio. I'm going to retrofit it with modern electronics like an LCD screen and a Raspberry Pi to see if we can make it into something awesome. I saw it in a thrift store and it was so unique I just had to have it. But first let's talk about what makes this unit so unattractive, at least to me. The front is bright yellow. I suppose it fits in with the popular decor of the time, but it's just an awful color. It's unpleasant to look at, much less placed next to your bed. This shape is weird too. Normally clock radios like this have their speaker on the back or the side, so the controls can go here. But since it has a front-facing speaker taking up so much space, it's very tall and it has this angled control panel sticking out. So now it takes up almost twice as much table space on your nightstand for no good reason. Obviously, it has an analog clock face, which means that setting the alarm is fairly imprecise, but that's how things were 50 plus years ago. I think you could probably get within five to 10 minutes of your desired wake time. There's a knob here in the back for setting the time or the alarm, depending on whether you push or pull while spinning it. But if you think you can set it for exactly, say, 517, you're out of luck. I think we'll replace this clock area with a nice LCD screen. Now, even though it's very mechanical, it does have features such as a sleep timer, wake to radio or alarm, and a very cool snooze button on the top. We'll have to reuse that button. My friend suggested making it into a video slot machine. I think we'll try that, among other things. It's also just really dirty and stained. This may have been on someone's nightstand for decades and was probably rarely, if ever, cleaned. Just think about what this clock may have seen over the years. Now, I'm reluctantly going to give this a UV light test just to see how dirty it is. Bodily fluids will fluoresce under UV light, so let's take a look. Yeah. This bottom part is really filthy. I'm getting a lot of... Ew. Ew. Before I take it apart and clean it out, let's see if it still works. This will be the first time I've plugged it in. Look at this ancient plug. All right, well, here we go. It didn't smoke, so that's a good sign. And the second hand is moving. Let's see how the radio sounds. Sing aloud if I was singing, so I just come along. And then uh, our friend Pamela. Sure, it's a mix of things. So, so some of it is people avoiding all news altogether, all and what they are expressing is the sounds sense pretty of good. It. All initial disassembly is performed outside because you never know what could be living inside the device. Note that decades of the clock's hot running motor have stained and even burned the inside of the case. Are you gonna put it back together? I don't know, buddy. Put it back. Daddy, put it back because I like it. Okay, honey. I'm going to make it into something really neat. With the same color? Yeah. The radio circuit board is pretty standard for the period. No integrated circuits here. Here I am removing the clock. It was really stained from years of heat from its motor. The original speaker is pretty small and weak. I think I'll replace it with a better one. I was hoping that the whole clock and face would come out together, leaving me a nice hole for the LCD, but it just wasn't built that way. After removing the clock face, I had to cut out a space for the display. I 3D printed a bracket to hold the display in place, and here you can see the ribbon cable that connects to the GPIO pass-through pins. Unfortunately, I could not reuse the bottom controls, so I had to cut them out too. 
It was important to reuse the mechanical snooze button at the top. I fashioned a clicky game switch on standoffs to fit perfectly under the button. I 3D printed a small bracket to hold some of the new electronics which will sit on top of the upgraded speaker. My I.O. board with a small FM radio module will sit in the center. A TPA 2016 audio amplifier will sit on the left. And on the right is a Max 4544 analog switch. A GPIO from the Pi will control this switch to send either the FM radio audio or the Pi audio to the amplifier. Here's the fully wired unit. Note the Pi 4 at the top, mounted behind the LCD, with a ribbon cable connecting the GPIO pins to the small custom I.O. board. You can see the tiny FM radio module mounted on this board. It would have been an unthinkable feat of miniaturization when this clock radio was manufactured. I'm holding the original radio board next to it for a size comparison. One final touch is the application of this liquid chrome that I found to touch up some bare spots on the front of the unit. You can also see the newly 3D printed screen bezel and the new control panel. So finally, here's the finished unit. Let me give you a quick demo. The LCD replaces the analog clock. However, I scanned in the face of the old clock and the hands are now digitally superimposed on that. So you can also load the slot machine by hitting the button on the top. And then running the slot machine is just another button press away. Now I haven't quite worked out the scoring, maybe that'll be in phase two of the project. The three buttons on the bottom change the mode between the clock, the slot machine game, and the radio. Is, um, that one is no longer operating. Thank you very much indeed for coming on. The radio module I'm using is controlled via I2C and provides RDS data such as station and song information. However, it requires a very strong signal, which I just don't have with the built-in antenna. The rotary encoder changes the station in tuner mode and controls the volume in all other modes. Let's take a moment to talk about the software. I needed something quick without coding a whole user interface for the screen. I decided to just display the output of a web browser, and the active content on the screen would be JavaScript running in that browser. Much of the JavaScript I figured I could already find written online. To allow the buttons to manipulate the JavaScript in the browser, I used a WebSocket connection between my Python code and the built-in web server. The Python code also manipulated the browser URL via its API. This was a fun project that breathed new life into an old and unusual looking device. I think most of these have probably been discarded long ago, so it's satisfying to keep this one alive. I also like the fact that this clock had a 50 plus year backstory that I don't even know about. In any case, I'll continue to look for interesting items to retrofit and document. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Are you shooting me? Huh? Yeah. What do, what do I need to do?